Hello, hello, we are live, hey. Coach Noel. Woo-hoo. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Biz Chat, your place of encouragement for faith based entrepreneurs. Hello, I'm your coach, Michelle, along with Coach Noel. And each week, we bring you topics of insight and encouragement to what we call that inner game that drives the successful outer game of faith-based entrepreneurship. And that's how we launch God-sized dreams into the marketplace and ministry. Yay! Yay! It is Friday, October 22nd. Holy Hannah, it is coming (laughs) by. It's coming quick. The end of the year is coming. Uh, We are excited to um, have some stuff going on for you as we're rushing into uh, the holiday season, Q4. Uh, So lots of things to talk about today. Um, But first, you know, we always just kind of have a little girl time. Everybody, (laughs) how is it going? How's your week going? How is life going? Because guess what? You know what? We know this this journey can be a little lonely at times. A little. Like, how's your week going? I know we're going to talk about it here, but we'd love to see in the chat. How's your week? What are your highs? What are your wins? What are your lows? Where do you where are you struggling? We'd love to see. We pray over these when we see you guys, ladies. So drop a comment, um, tag your friends. Let's have a little chat time here because I know Coach Noel. We've we've had a good coaching session. We had some highs and lows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How was your week? What you drinking? What's fueling you this morning? And let us know how it went this week. <laughs> yeah, and we have some people live already, which is so exciting. Yeah, and um, yeah, so light up the chat for us. Lori is not here this week, um, so we might be a little. I might be a little slower. I'm doing double duty. Yes, but, Lori's um, at Voice of the Prophets. Hello, Lori. Have an awesome time. We can't wait to hear about all of that. Yeah, you. she always comes back kind of revved up from those. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So, all right. Well, you want to go first or me? Oh, the, I think I can go first too. Okay. Yeah. So just starting with some coffee. I let Coach Noel know. Oh, here's my friend's cup. Oh. Um, given to me by one of my bestest friends. Oh. Shout out Michelle Race. Um, one of my first Christian business friends ever before I even knew I was called to entrepreneurship and she actually hi we got to chat today or chat last yesterday and she was just encouraging me about the road of entrepreneurship and how they tried so many different marketing efforts and they were fruitless and Mm. just hearing that was such a balm to me not that I love that I mean just to know that sometimes you're gonna try a marketing effort and it's not really gonna it's not gonna land and that is part of the journey and the learning experience and why we're kind of developing this Operation Peter's Net um, uh, one day, you know, seminar on marketing, because we we don't want you to waste time on things and energy on things. Um, and then put your net in the right place. Yeah, put your net in the right place when it comes to marketing and also um, really know how to bounce back when something doesn't work. So um, that was just a huge win for me, having somebody who's just a few years ahead of me, uh, being able to speak into me, who's been a friend for a lifelong friend, really now at this point. Um, oh, that's awesome. And so that was, that was a high, high, just personally, we've been getting a lot of things done for our, our senior who moved with us across country, you know, senior year, there's just a lot of struggle. So we're just a lot of good things happening. A lot of highs with uh, life right now. Uh, Lows are that I got to get my booty in gear with some of this entrepreneur stuff. Because as we're going to talk about today, life sometimes becomes more important than entrepreneurship. And so some things fall through the cracks. We're going to talk about how to juggle it all today. And I know it's been kind of on your heart too, Coach Noel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this kind you know, you ladies have probably noticed that the topics often come out of you know what happened for us and um but i wanted to highlight audrey because she said she got cus- a customer order and her boyfriend and no lows so that's <laughs> awesome that's pretty rare so we're excited for you audrey. celebrating you audrey <laughs> yeah so girls keep them coming we want to we want to hear what you got um okay my highs and lows I'll start with my lows because they led to my highs. My lows were kind of hitting the wall between grief, overwhelm. um, And I think some of it was just kind of, you know, when your stress cup is already at the top because of just life events and then Mm -hmm. a little thing. 
and kind of just puts you over the edge. And um, that is what occurred with me <laughs> earlier this week. And um, it was extremely painful. And you guys, I think you guys know that my husband and I, I would say we're very well on the way recovered from COVID, but my husband especially got it very hard. The weekend we closed on a house and we're supposed to move a few days after. And so that's kind of the context of what I'm referring to. So it's been a move and serious illness to where I wasn't sure he was going to make it. And those of you who are maybe have a psychology background probably have heard this, but there is a scale that psychologists have put together about what are the top stressful events and moving is in the top five. And so is illness or, you know, fear of death. Um, death is also up there too. So we got two of those top five within the same time period. And um, yeah, it's been tough. That was a low. This has led to my highs being really asking God, okay, I need some added support. And then finding out my publisher had just, um, she had just hired an intercessory prayer team to pray for all the authors on her um, docket. She also hired a mindset coach because she was seeing a lot of her authors struggle with mindset just before the launch of the book. And so found out about that. I had both of those sessions this week. Um, They were both, I did the prayer session first and I met with the coach next and they were both really pivotal for me, exposed some blind sides. Um, And so this was an inner game for me. I didn't do a lot of, there were no writing ads. There was no, you know, working on the business. This was a working on the business inner game stuff. And this morning, I feel like God is finally starting to give me some ideas that have peace on them Mm. for launching the book in January. Yay. So working through all the things uh, that come at us, life and big things. So if you're do if you're in the middle of some some stuff, guys, if you're in the middle of uh, things that are challenging like give yourself some grace and know that they're um like coach noel said there's there's uh it's opening the door to uh understanding more about um, what your needs are and what uh what you can and can't do and Mm -hmm. being free to uh, set aside uh, some goals while you deal with family things and um and let god then open the door to what's next in your business. And so you're feeling coach Noel, like it was a process, but on the other side, there was like this breakthrough Mm -hmm. with what to do for business. Mm -hmm. So I would think in that time, you trying to force, like, this was what we talked about in our coaching and, and I have Noel's permission to share kind of Mm -hmm. a little bit of what came out of our coaching session. But, you know, when we're in those positions, we're trying to force something to happen and it's not happening. And then we get even more frustrated God's like, hey, I called you to rest in peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that is yeah. really what the theme just keep, kind of keeps yeah. coming and, back. And sometimes those inner game things, and those of you who watch us regularly have probably noticed a little tweak and a shift around really focusing a little bit more on the inner game, where we kind of maybe balanced it, inner game and outer game before. But I really would not have gotten these outer game pieces in place without getting clear on the blind sides and without some of that prayer support Mm. and talking through with my support system. Um, Yeah. So it really, you know, I think I thought maybe I just think that because I'm a therapist and I'm kind of (laughs) trained to think that way, but (laughs) I think not enough people are talking about it. No, I think that is really um, if you look at everybody, even when you get to those higher level, we said this before, when you even get to like 10,000 and beyond masterminds to, you know, 100,000, these people all have the same things. It's mm-hmm. the next level 
of imposter syndrome, the next level of I don't know what I'm doing and I don't have the answers. Like it's just always there. Mm -hmm. It's just goes level by level as we we reach these new goals, these new heights. So learning these tools, being able to review these tools and kind of have a place that we said, we just want to be the safe arc where you can come back and always get some, um, just feel like you got the, you got the, what you need to get the tools and the Mm -hmm. safety and the love that you need to, to say, yeah, you're right. I got the tools. I know, I know what to do. I can turn around and face, um, all these mindsets and, uh, just issues that kind of come at us almost accusatory and, um, the confidence stuff. So we're Mm -hmm. just realizing more and more that this just doesn't go away in the entrepreneurial journey. (laughs) just doesn't mm-hmm. go away. It's just levels and just layers. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a pivot. It doesn't mean we won't ever bring on people who have outer game strategies. I think we're having another, um, uh, we've got some things lined up just for uh, authors and, and other things. But it, it our focus here is really going to be encouraging. Like that's my spiritual gift mix. And Noel mm-hmm. being a therapist, Dr. Darlene being, you know, uh, brain surgeon, neuroscientist. We just, that's where our gift mix is. So we will definitely be um, here to bring you those strategic topics that drive the outer game from the inner game of peace and rest and grace. So let's launch into it, Coach Noel. Today's topic is really getting real with the juggle, the juggle mm-hmm. of entrepreneurship and life in grace. And we want to make sure that you guys know Yep, it's pretty much the way it goes, especially for females. And we've realized more and more that um, having uh, men mentors usually uh, is difficult for women because we don't. It has been for us. And so if you're finding that you can't keep a pace or you just isn't a. there's a disconnect. It's probably because we shoulder so much as uh, women, as mamas, as wives, as just that leading with the wet side of the brain, (laughs) women who just kind of have a little bit more emotional capacity and uh, juggle capacity. And so we end up taking on quite a bit. And Noelle, that's what happened this week with you. You were feeling Mm -hmm. like you had everything was dumping on you. And we feel that way oftentimes, like we're the hub of everything. And if we don't get it done, no one's getting it done. And everybody's looking at us to get everything done. And it gets to the point where uh, we're a little overwhelmed and we need to communicate what's happening inside of us and that we are we are out of capacity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So maybe walk us through this week, a little bit of how you overcame that, that mindset. Okay. Um, so Yeah, you just described it really well. And for me, a lot of times when I am feeling overwhelmed and anger is some of the first things Mm. that come up for me. And um, I kind of dealt with my anger this week just by shutting down. Like my husband (laughs) asked me one night, are you, you just seem indifferent. And, um, and I was like, I, I really am like I'm and I think they have hit their own stressors as well. And some of the way they're dealing with it is like, I will, I will ask them, Hey, will you do that? And my son and my husband would say, yeah. And then not do like, and um, because that's to some degree COVID brain and also some degree, I think, you know, trying to numb out and trying to focus on some things that will make it not feel overwhelming on their end. And so I just, you know, our evening time together is always, you know, we snuggle with Joseph, we have prayer to, together, I, one of us will tuck him in, but I'm always active during that part. And I just was like, okay, I'm going to bed. Good night. You know, it's just like, peace out. Yeah, peace out. Yeah. And, um, and so it, I am really grateful to have a husband who knows me so well that he asked because I, I really had, I had just kind of shut down and he asked what's going on. And so that first night I ended up just kind of saying things as they came to me, there were no tears, there was no emotion. It was just frustration, anger, overwhelm. And I have learned not to attack, um, to just say I'm angry because, you know, and, 
and he listened and, and, and part of it too was we had not really processed. He was so out of it when he was sick because he was very ill. He was so out of it. He didn't really know what it was like for me. And we had not talked about that because it was painful for him to hear. And so some of that, I was able to start talking about what that was like and not, you know, it's most of us in this country, I think have experienced it. Like a lot of people have gotten COVID and there's some really sad stories about it. And, um, and processing that shifted some things. Um, the next morning we talked, our anniversary was coming up and we had not planned anything because I was at capacity and we ended up process. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think this is important to note because damn, we all felt this way. Your husband looks at you. What are we doing? Like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> How come it was my job to plan the anniversary? How come it was my job to make sure everything is done? And I, I want to just highlight that that's kind of where Coach Noah was feeling was like everything is mm -hmm. on my shoulders because we have this wonderful ability to juggle so much. Um, we end up taking it on, even if we don't take it on in our physically get it done. It's in our head. Mm -hmm. And so we are maxed out. And then when we check out, people are like, wait, what? What's going what on? happened? Where'd you go? Oh. But yeah, they're confused. <laughs> and we're like, because if it doesn't matter to you, it doesn't matter to me anymore. And I'm just kind of hitting this place of, um, you know, I'm not going to be the one to get it all done. And I think that's where you were saying, you know, it's tough to, to not walk into this toxic atmosphere and take it into anger and take it into, mm -hmm. I'm going to get out of you. And why are you, so, why can't you have more capacity? And we start, you know, accusing and blaming. And, and that's where we, that's why we wanted to highlight this topic today, because it's so easy at this point to shift into a toxic atmosphere, have a toxic response, not anything mm -hmm. that is going to be loving, helpful, and mm -hmm. um, solutionary, but yeah. instead <laughs> it's going to just uh, make other people feel bad about uh, their lack of capacity in that moment. So I just yeah. wanted to break a yeah, little bit. <laughs> <laughs> My story, I probably need to get it succinct. <laughs> you can tell the more detailed you want to be, the more recent the rawness was probably. <laughs> It was pretty raw. And I think it was just beautiful that you were able to share it in our coaching session and feel like we did get somewhere. Where did we get with this coach Noel? Where did we go? That really felt like a breakthrough for you. It, the first part, what <laughs> the part of it was ending up sharing. My husband confronted me that he felt like I was indifferent. He wanted some time with me. He just wanted some time with his wife and I was too busy. And and when I responded, this was all on Marco Polo. I mean, I cried. And girls, sometimes that's the first thing that needs to happen. You need a good cry. So too bad Darlene's not here because she could probably talk about this in even more detail. There are toxins that leave our body through tears and tears alone. Wow. It literally is a shower for your body. Yeah. Yeah. I get chills when I say that. So girls, if you feel it building up and you feel like I get, I'm a, I'm a feeler and I cry mm. very easily. Mm. And most of my life I was embarrassed about that. And I would apologize. I don't do that anymore because it's healing. It is healing. You need to cry sometimes. Mm. Like, wow, guys, uh, somebody type that in the chat. You need to yeah. cry sometimes that toxins actually leave your body when you cry. I have never really heard that before. And I too cry at the drop of a hat. Like I'm serious. Like when, when somebody wins, like Miss America, I cry. Like I know they work so hard and <laughs> like I will cry at just mm -hmm. about anything. So that that's that's amazing so that's the first step that kind of just was able you were able to get more of an emotional release mm -hmm. and then yeah. and then um and then it was funny because after I cried I did feel like a limp dish towel um because it wasn't just a few tears it was like a <gasps> <sobbing>. <laughs> there was a lot going on like you said two <laughs> levels of high stressors in your life and that's a lot to deal with yeah, so it's worth an ugly cry. Yes. And after that release, it is so funny how I could see the solutions. Mm. Um, and, and that prayer time, 
you know, we talk about, you know, getting coaching and having your community, um, that prayer time with the intercessory team. And they did, they gave some prophetic words Mm -hmm. too of just encouragement so much. And I said that at the beginning, but I will repeat it. Our breakthrough is on the other side of clearing the stuff that's bottled up in us. Mm. Um, And I remember when, you know, particularly about the book, because the book launch is coming up. And those of you who have experienced um, this illness probably know that part of what happens is just kind of a lack of motivation, motivation, Mm -hmm. like just a, just a fatigue, you know, and so the, the launch is coming up. We've put it off so many times and, but God, I did feel like God gave me a date. And one of the things that happened was um, when the couple was praying for me, God told me, you need to see the book through my eyes before you're ready to launch it. Mm. And he showed me a picture of what that looked like. And it was women breaking free from bondage. Like it was like an expl- a woman in a jail cell with her hands handcuffed mm. and an explosion of everything breaking open. Wow. Yeah. And all of this after a good cry, ladies, Mm -hmm. (laughs) a good cry and letting God, like, I'm sure pouring out your spirit to God too. Just like, I can't handle this right now. It's too much. I need you. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. it's kind of also probably a a cleansing and crying out like where I need my cup filled. I need to empty all of this out, the toxins out, but also I need a filling and that it came. Um, It came out of that, that place and you started to get breakthrough. We had our coaching session on Tuesday and, and then I just want to highlight that we had a practical breakthrough there mm-hmm. where I think you were feeling overwhelmed with your schedule. And maybe this is you, ladies. You can put yourself in a scenario where you can't find a, a good routine or a good rhythm because there's so much going on in your mm-hmm. life. You're in a season right now where there's just little ones or there's another job you have to do. So you're trying to do um, a side hustle. And and so you're you're just having trouble getting into a good routine. But what did we do? that really felt good to you in, in the, um, you know, as entrepreneurs, often a pitfall of ours is that we are all or nothing. (laughs) And I knew that I needed to allocate some time for creative writing in my morning, which is my on time. It's my most creative time by the afternoon. I'm not feeling so good. And most of the clients I see, most of the groups I'm involved in are in the morning. And so I hadn't really done anything with it because I wasn't willing to give up any of those other commitments. And Michelle was like, well, what about just one day? I was like, oh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you do have one day open, it looks like. Can we just power in that day? <laughs> You know, sometimes, guys, it is. It's like having a coach, having somebody else look in and mm-hmm. read the label back to you. I just asked her, like, what is it? What is it that's frustrating you? How How is your life? And so once she gave it to me, I could show it back to her mm-hmm. and say, here's where there is time to get these things done and and be able to stay faithful to all your family commitments, your personal commitments, mm-hmm. your business commitments, um, and have time to do Um, this next level thing that God is introducing into you, which is this book for you. Mm -hmm. And so ladies, if you have something that God's saying, tapping you on the shoulder as a next level thing for your business, I want to encourage you right now, where can you fit that in? Mm -hmm. Look at your week. Look at your week and figure out that there is a little place, a little heart nugget where God said right here, (laughs) This is where I want you to do what I'm asking you to do. It may not be something you can do every day, and it may not be something that you can do every week even, but I bet there's a time on your calendar right now Mm -hmm. that you can dedicate to doing what it is he's asking you to do to take your business to the next level. In spite of all the craziness in your life, in spite of all of the emotions and the toxins and things that need to be cleared out, in spite of all of the uh, tough conversations that might need to come, um, to get uh, life a little bit more manageable, there is something on the calendar. There's a space on the calendar for what God's asking mm-hmm. you to do. I know that there is. He wouldn't ask you to do it if there wasn't space on the calendar. So if you're feeling overwhelmed right now, I want you to just stop and pray. Stop the broadcast. Give it a little pause. Mm-hmm. Come back. But 
what, what, where is it, Lord? Ask him, where is it that I can Mm -hmm. fit this in my calendar and stop feeling frustrated Mm -hmm. that I can't get all, all the things done. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that was such a huge moment of breakthrough for you, coach Noel, that Mm -hmm. you, when you felt the release that I, I am free to only do this one time a week, Mm -hmm. it was like, Oh, when I think, like, why is the answer so easy? Mm-hmm. It was just such a simplification and such a, a agreement. Everything just felt right. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I can get it done in that week, and it will every it will work out. Yeah, and I wanted to throw something in along with that. That's kind of a side item, but I think something that women really struggle with. And ladies, if this is true, put that in the chat as well. If we're kind of resonating with you, that. One of the things I had to do too to make that Thursday morning more available is we're in a larger house now and it's a huge blessing, but there's also more to clean. And usually that was my soul. Like my son had his chores, but you know, you have to supervise the chores when they're young and that almost takes longer than doing it himself. And one of the things I had to ask for from my husband was, I need a night that you can come home early and we all clean for a few hours and we just get it done. Now he was not super excited about that, but he was willing. And sometimes we don't ask for help. We don't ask for solutions because I don't know. I, is that the nurture, the mommy nurture, you know, that we do want to take care of everybody. We do want to nurture. Um, but sometimes we got to ask for some hard things because what we're doing is not sustainable. And I love that you highlighted, you pinpointed so clearly it was cleaning. For for uh, the rest of you ladies, there may be something else that is really, mm-hmm. really irritating you right now that you can't, nobody's helping you with um, in your household or in your business or whatever. Whatever that one thing is that is really, really your, under your skin, um, I'm going to uh, encourage you to ask for help in a way that is not toxic, right? And not accusatory and not angry. So when you can get to that place where you're, you understand that everybody's at their capacity, but we can, we can ask and say, we, I, I need help. Um, so I want to encourage you all, if you're feeling like I am so overwhelmed with my family life and my business life, um, what is the one thing What is the one thing that if you had that help with it or you had it off your plate, you feel like you could get further in your business? Identify that one thing and get help for that one thing. Ask God for his uh, amazing solutions that you might not be seeing even to bring that one thing to God. So now we've talked about two really, uh, really tangible solutions, right? Asking for help, crying it out, and um, looking for something in your schedule. There is a place in your Mm -hmm. schedule to get it done. Ladies, this is what happens is we don't look for these things and we don't ask for help. And then the weeks go by and the months go by and we are not getting breakthrough and we're not getting progress, right? Because we just keep going, I can't get it done. I don't, we keep telling ourselves the same story. And it's probably true because we won't, we aren't doing anything about it to change it. But there are simple little things. And I think that's what we need to learn as female entrepreneurs, that the little things can can be huge in our business. And right Mm -hmm. now, you may be in a season where you have to take a little thing and you can't, you can't get it all in one big bite. You don't have the freedom to just say, okay, every day, all day, I get to focus on my business. Um, Mm -hmm. So where is it that you can focus on your business? Mm -hmm. What is it that's holding you up? Um, If you can make a couple of small tweaks in your schedule, like getting help with something and asking God where you can fit in this next level thing that he might be calling you to, um, or the one thing that just seems to never get done in a week, Mm -hmm. that is where you're going to start to get the traction. You're going to start churning, turning the tables. You're going to start moving the Titanic, right? Get that big ship rolling, uh, which may feel a little overwhelming right now because there's so many things and there's so much to do. Um, Getting those few small wins um, will start to snowball for you. And I just um, applaud Coach Noel for working through (laughs) this because um, and being so vulnerable. I'm like, you're just sort of always on the call. I'm like, (laughs) digesting your life um, on, on, um, 
on our broadcast, but we want to we want to be real with you guys that mm-hmm. these are just tough days sometimes and weeks sometimes in these early years of entrepreneurship and um that we one thing that came out for us coach noel was kind of the the parable of like the planting of a tree or planting of crops that it Mm -hmm. often takes three to five years to see abundant fruit or Mm -hmm. much fruit as scripture kind of calls it like Mm -hmm. you make fruitfulness and it gets you encouraged and then you don't see some and that's a little tough and Mm -hmm. um there's kind of this up and down um uh, porpoising that goes on as we are uh, launching businesses and we're mm-hmm. in that three to five years of growth. And so if there isn't much fruit or abundant fruit right out, out of the gate, it is so typical and common for entrepreneurs to to have to have that few years of nurturing yourself mm-hmm. in your personal growth, nurturing your business skills um, to really get to that place of abundant fruit. Yeah. So, and statistically that, you know, we were talking about it for trees because didn't you guys plant some fruit trees? We did because we're in Utah now. We can actually have fruit trees. <laughs> um, yeah. So we were talking about that and I was like, statistically, that's usually about how long it takes new businesses. So yes. I thought is, we were like, wow, isn't that interesting? <laughs> yes, that it takes about three to three years for, for your new trees to plant. And I was saying that my husband and my daughter actually um, did research at the nursery to make sure that the trees they purchased were actually going to be three to five years old and bearing fruit when we put them in the ground. That's so um, great. So, yeah. Um, unless you're going to buy a business that's three to five years old, we're going to have to go through this season of um cultivating and nourishing and really Mm -hmm. just nurturing and nourishing and be, um, be intentional about it and be okay with it. So um, that, that is our, our encouragement to you uh, today uh, that, you know, there is just a process and a season. And when we get these hiccups in our uh, journey, as we're going through these first early years, like to ask for help, to make a way in your schedule, um, start turning the ship around. And if you're having trouble with that you and you just need uh, more uh, coaching or more encouragement, we want to invite you into our membership group. It's super affordable. It's just, it's, we've made it that way because we know, we know that um, it's not easy these, these early years to afford coaching. And so we wanted to make a, an affordable way for everybody to be able to afford the coaching. Um, also, you guys, if you have not connected with us, you need to get over into a, a 15 minute call. Go ahead and book a call. We want to meet you. We want to see how we can help you, how we can encourage you. Um, it is not a sales pitch uh, at all. We don't stiff arm you into coming into our membership. We may uh, offer solutions, but if you just need a 15 minute call, we've done that too. Like, Hey, we just want to encourage you. So no strings attached there. Also, if you want to come into our free group, my atmosphere of grace, where we are just coming in to give you a little encouragement, prepare him room, getting our heart (laughs) focused and, um, getting rid of those toxins as we're heading into, uh, the busy, busy holiday season Q4 for a a lot of entrepreneurs, really a tough, a busy time to really stay focused on our faith. So doing a free group there, uh, uh, nothing you have to do, you can just show up and listen. Um, (laughs) And then if you want to get started on the roadmapper process, if you're just needing that clarity and of getting out of that swamp of confusion on what am I doing? What am I called to? What on earth uh, did did I say yes to with this whole entrepreneurship? I seem to be losing my way. Uh, make sure to get into our um, roadmapper group the next time it comes around and you can get a start there on your uh, roadmap. We have a introductory uh, teaching there on faithoverfearbizchicks.com slash my roadmap. All these links will be in our podcast uh, as well. So Coach Noel, thank you so much for another uh, just revelatory podcast here <laughs> of how we do it, how we get through it uh, in faith-based entrepreneurship. Everybody, I hope you have a great weekend. Friday Fire, we are coming for you with a little bit deeper nuggets on how we get through tools and tactics to get through some of these early years of faith-based entrepreneurship. All right, we love you guys, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>